morning. It is Sunday, August 7th, 2022. And before I even say the title, y'all, I have to go on and make my usual Sunday morning statement and tell you that we have another great lesson here today. Our subject of this lesson this morning is a new home. The Bible background is Revelation 21, 1 through 8, the printed text, Revelation 21, 1 through 8, devotional reading, Revelation 15, 1 through 8. The aim for change says, by the end of this lesson, we will examine the unique genre of apocalypse that characterizes Revelation in order to discern how to understand its message. Contemplate the creation of a new heaven and a new earth for the hope that this vision holds for the faithful and embrace the peace of God that begins in this life with Jesus and continues in God's new creation. So that aim for change sounds like, ooh, wee, that's a lot. And when you look at the things that we're going to be focusing on in this aim for change, we are going to examine. Now, we know what the word examine means. When you had to go to a doctor's appointment, and in order for them to find out what was going on with you, they had to examine to see exactly what was going on. So we are going to look at some things to see what's going on. And then that word contemplate, it means to either view or consider or to meditate on. Y'all know what the word meditate means. It's just like when you ask your parents for something and they say, well, I think about it. They're going to meditate on it. So as we do this, we're going to be contemplating some things. And then embrace. We know what the word embrace means, y'all. That word embrace, uh, you can look at it from different uh, points of views or perspectives when you think of the word embrace. When you come up to someone that you want to show them a lovingly embrace. So you may want to hug them. That's an embrace. So we're going to embrace the peace of God. Anybody want to say, say anything on this aim for change before we go further into this Sunday school lesson this morning? All right. The in focus says, Randy's phone rang and he buried his head in the hard hospital pillow. He didn't want to talk to anyone, even on his 50th birthday. He was too ashamed and too broken. He thought over the past few decades of his life, what had gone wrong. His life had started out so promising, marrying his high school sweetheart, graduating from one of the country's best universities, landing his dream job, but then the addictions took control of his life. Drugs, gambling, adultery, he had done them all. He sighed deeply, now he was alone. He was just an old, broken, bitter man. If only he had never taken that first hit. If only he had never bet that first dollar. If only he had never cheated on Sherry. If only, if only. He lets the tears come rolling down his cheeks. God, what I wouldn't give for a second chance, he prayed. I've made such a mess of my own life. If you're really there, please help me. Help me. Now, Randy thinks of that day a full decade ago as the time when he really began to live. God heard his prayer and sent someone who shared the gospel with him. God gave him the new beginning he had prayed for so desperately. God has restored Randy's family, and he thanks God every day with the assurance that he will one day dwell with God for all eternity. Many people would like to have a new beginning. What is it like to begin anew? How can Robert's testimony demonstrate the hope of a new beginning to others? Now, that's a lot going on in this In Focus with Randy. Now, when you look at Randy, Randy had really done uh, a triple thing, if you will. 
And that being the drug, gambling, and adultery, like he said, y'all, he had done it all. And in the midst of him doing it all, he realizes that in doing that, oh, how it just tore his world apart. And he, if you will, y'all, he was at wit's end. I'm going to say it like that because of the fact that he was rock bottom. And to think, look at Randy, he probably didn't feel like uh, he had any place to go. He was wrapped in his world of misery because when he looked back over his life, y'all, he saw all the errors of his way and all the mistakes that he made. And so therefore, in sitting there and realizing all that he had done and that he had really caused himself to be where he is right now, as it said, he said he was so ashamed. And the one thing about it, even though he was ashamed, one thing we got to look at, y'all, thanks be to God that Randy still knew how to pray. And in him knowing how to pray to him going to God and, and asking him, God, what I wouldn't do to get a second chance. I made such a mess of my life. If you are really there, please help me. Now, that last part, y'all, if you are really there, help me. Now, you can take that a couple of ways. And y'all, I'm standing here and I say, if you are really there, help me. That was that mustard seed faith right there, uh, getting ready to be activated for him. Because here he is, don't want to talk to anybody. And even though he didn't want to talk to anybody, he knew who he could talk to. Anybody want to say anything on this in focus before we go further into this lesson? I told y'all this is a good lesson, a new home. Come on, Daddy. in focus I could look back over my life and see some of the stuff that I did and like Randy here you know now I, I what and I asked myself is why did I do some of the things that I did and I knew that it was wrong but I did it anyway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now I look back and I said Lord I so do thank you for right now. Amen. And you know, keep talking about for another chance. The Lord just let me start it off again. Mm -hmm. And I just mm -hmm. thank God Amen. for being able to look back and see how far he has brought me. And y'all know the Lord is still keeping me right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there. Cause Amen. I uh, and, and you know what? The thing about it is, Daddy, this is right. This is the time to look back, cause the subject says a new home. And then in looking at Randy, Randy had to look back because when you look at this, he said, "Now a full decade later, he thinking back on this. This this been ten years ago that this happened to me, but I, I can look back and see where I was, and look and see where I am now. And thanks be to God that." I have that second chance. I've got a, a, a new leash on life, if you will. Anybody else got anything they want to say on this in focus before we go further into this lesson? All right. The keeping mind says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation 21.4. That's new King. That's uh, the the King James version. Now the New Living Translation says it like this: He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Revelation twenty one four. You ready, D? Revelation twenty one one through eight. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first time, heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw, and I, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. 
and God shall wipe away all the all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. Thank you, D. Amen. Yeah, we can really get, get further into this Sunday school lesson, A New Home. The People, Places, and Time. John. John, whose name in Hebrew means Jehovah is gracious, was one of Jesus' 12 disciples, and he is believed to be the author of the Gospel of John, three epistles, and the book of Revelation. The son of Zebedee and brother of James, he was one of the three in Jesus' inner circle, along with James and Peter, who witnessed the transfiguration and he was present with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane right before his arrest. John is recorded as the only disciple present at the crucifixion and was instructed by Jesus to care for his mother, Mary. Of all 12 disciples, he was the only one not martyred according to tradition. However, he was in prison on the Isle of Patmos for his faith it was there that he wrote the book of Revelation. I like y'all how we get this background. So, you know, the one thing I like about this people, places, and time, and we get this background, it, it's, it's like we're getting, uh, uh, we're getting a, 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 a recap, if you will. So uh, it's like when you uh, look at something, you may have watched some kind of uh, series, and in order for you to be caught up, they tell you, some things that occurred previously. Previously on our last episode. There you go, exactly. Um, so when last we left, so so here we are. We're getting this, uh, we're getting this information and and this background, if you will, as to John, so that we can get further into this lesson as we talk about this new home, bride, the imagery of the bride is used widely in the Bible as a description of the people of God. In the Old Testament, the prophets presented Israel as a bride who had committed repeated adultery. The prophets also proclaimed that God was faithful to his unfaithful bride and would restore her. In the book of Revelation, bride imagery is used for the church and her relationship to Christ. The bride belongs to Christ, who is the bridegroom. In Revelation, the church, is, as the bride of the Lamb, has prepared herself for marriage by performing righteous deeds. In the last days, a great wedding is portrayed with the church prepared for her bridegroom. The bride picture here has not earned her status through righteous deeds. These acts were the church's obedient response to God's saving grace, the garments of righteousness were given to her. Now, see, once again, he's painting a picture, y'all, in your mind's eye. And when he talks about how he used the bride as that imagery, when you think of a bride, you think of that, that, uh, that person that is presenting as beautiful as they can on that special day. And, and that in giving you that imagery, it, that bride is, is a special thing. And so he wants you to recognize that. And if you notice that there are quite a few uh, examples in the Bible where he uses, if you will, um, the example 
and I don't want to use the word parable, but that what, that's what comes to mind in getting you to see exactly what he needs you to see. You know, some people need to get visualization. So therefore, in giving you that visualization, he'll tell you, okay, picture a bride and then breaks it down to you about that bride as it relates to that bride, uh, to that um, bridegroom so that you can see the correlation of how this is going to come together or to get that picture, if you will, of what he's trying to tell you in regards to what he's sharing with you in this, we got this new home that we're talking about. Anybody want to say anything on people, places, and time before we get into the background and go further into the Sunday school lesson? looking at this lesson and what Jesus is doing here is showing John something, mm -hmm. y'all. See, John, as a matter of fact, they done killed the, prop the, mm -hmm. the uh, apostles, you know, mm -hmm. and John gonna be the only one that gonna live and die of old age. Mm -hmm. Do you know all the rest of them when Jesus was going through coke, they run away mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. Only John mm -hmm. was left there. Mm -hmm. And and when Jesus was on the cross, y'all, I don't know what this in your lesson is, no, but when I get in Revelation, mm -hmm. I get carried away. But when Jesus was on the cross being crucified, mm -hmm. he looked over and saw his mother. Mm -hmm. And he looked and he saw John. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, one behold thy son. Mm -hmm. And he told John to behold his mother. Mm -hmm. Other words, he was leaving his mother with somebody. Mm -hmm. Look out after his mm -hmm. mother after he's gone. Because mm -hmm. Jesus knew he was leaving, mm -hmm. but he wanted somebody yes. to be with his mother. Yes. Now, you know, it's kind of strange the way Jesus do things. You know, Jesus had some more sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. But when he got ready to leave, he left his mother with John. Mm -hmm. And according to the word, she, John stayed with her until she got old mm -hmm. and he was old. Mm -hmm. And then John died a natural death, but it wasn't planned that way mm -hmm. with the people that were looking at John. Because, see, John had been preaching the word and telling about Jesus mm -hmm. for a long time. But then the people done killed all of them, so they said, well, we just, what we'll do with, I'm using my word mm -hmm. now, y'all. Mm -hmm. What we'll do with this, we'll really punish him. Mm -hmm. They got some oil, hot mm -hmm. oil, boiling mm -hmm. oil, mm -hmm. and put John in that boiling oil. And then after he done died in that oil, they took him out on the island mm -hmm. where there was nothing mm -hmm. out there, nothing. Mm -hmm. So they know he going to die now because mm -hmm. they done boiling this some oil. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody out there to take mm -hmm. him or nothing. But while he was out there on the aisle, <laughs> John heard himself. Yeah. And he looked around, and who was there but Jesus? Jesus let him know. He said, I am he that was dead. He said, but now I'm alive mm -hmm. forevermore. Mm -hmm. And he told John to get a book and write these things on a book. Lord have mm -hmm. mercy. <laughs> he want John to write and tell about what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And John began to write, mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. And, and he let John know to put in that book, them people that would pierce him in the side when mm -hmm. he come back, they going to see him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop right now. And now, now let me just say, y'all, so as we're getting further, going into this lesson. This is part of that background so that you can get even more of a clear picture of what we are getting ready to talk about. Amen, thank you for that daddy. Background, daddy will probably hit some of this with what he just, how he just opened up this lesson a little bit more for us. The book of Revelation records four visions of John. The first vision is of Jesus and his messages to the seven churches. The second vision depicts Jesus Christ at the throne of God, the opening of the seven seals and the seven trumpet blasts. The third vision describes Christ on Mount Zion. One in our lesson today opens with the beginning of the fourth vision in which we will learn about the ultimate fulfillment of God's promise in Christ 
the holy city, the new Jerusalem. So as we get ready to go at this at a glance, the, the at a glance is that we're going to discuss today is the presentation, the proclamation, and the promises, the three Ps, as I put over here to the side. All right, so the presentation. Genesis 1 gives us the account of creation of the world. God divided the light from the darkness and the land from the sea. He created fish, birds, plants, animals, and then he created humans. In Revelation 21, God reveals his creativity by first presenting the church, the body of Christ, as the bride. He then goes on to describe the place where the bride will dwell, a new heaven and new earth. The old world will have passed away with all of its problems, especially the chaotic sea. The new heaven and the new earth will be a fitting place for the bride, the redeemed of the Lord to dwell. Now, let me stop right there, y'all. A new, the new heaven and new earth will be a fitting place for the bride, the redeemed of the Lord to dwell. Now, that part that says the redeemed of the Lord will dwell. Now, when you talk about the redeemed of the Lord to dwell, do y'all know who the redeemed of the Lord is? Amen. It is us. So now he is specifying and letting you know who will be there. So if you are not redeemed of the Lord, guess what? You are not included in him in this where he talked about we will dwell. Now, that does not mean that you cannot become one of the redeemed of the Lord. You can become one of the redeemed of the Lord, but it takes some decisions on your part in order to get there. Well, how do I get there, you ask? Well, the way that you get there, you've got to first uh, accept. you got to accept, and then you've got to believe, and then you've got to confess. And in doing those things, you also have to turn around. And that's why when you hear people talk about uh, the used-to-be portion of them, uh, just like when we look at the In Focus and what Randy did, how he put it, y'all, when Randy say what he did, he said he had done it all. Uh, so when you look at this and he talk about the drugs, the gambling, adultery, he had done them all. And then the one thing about it, in him, he had done it all. He had that moment of reflection that came back to him after he recognized that in me doing it all, I really messed up. So now he is at that, if only, or was at that, if only, if only, if only. And the one thing that you realize is that if only uh, is two words that can sometimes mess you up. Because of the fact that Randy knew that the drugs he shouldn't have been doing, the gambling he shouldn't have been doing, the adultery he shouldn't have been doing, but he did it anyway. And then when the consequences for his actions happened the way they did, then now he at this place of, if only. If only I had done things differently. And the one thing about it is, y'all, is that we have that presence of mind to know whether or not what we're doing is the thing that we should be doing so that we won't have to go back and have one of those if only moments because of the fact we chose to do the wrong thing in that moment. Anybody want to say anything before I go a little bit further on this one, y'all? All right. So the question here says, what kinds of images and feelings does bride bring to mind? I'm going to start with that. When you think about bride, I, the, the words joy came to mind for me. And then it says, why are those helpful in understanding the relationship between Christ and the church? Y'all, that relationship between Christ and the church is special. It's real special. And the one thing about it, because of it being so special, you want to make sure that you are about the right thing. And so therefore that you can remain, if you will, in, in the, the, I'm going to say it like this, y'all, the end crowd of the redeemed of the Lord group so that we're going we gonna to dwell. 
and, and, and not be over in the other portion as we get further into this lesson, as Deacon already read, when we get further down into this lesson, where he's going to identify those specific things that can mess you up. But the one thing, thanks be to God, is that as long as we got breath in our body, we got that opportunity to th turn some things around. We don't have to stay where we are. Now, if we stay where we are, we stay where we are because we choose to stay where we are. If you don't like where you are, if you don't like the things that you're doing, the only person that can make those things change is you. And the thing about it is, is that in the end focus, I'm going to go back to the end focus, Randy recognized that and he realized that. So now Randy got a testimony and talk about 10 years ago, this is where I was. But thanks be to God, because of my going to him with that little bit of mustard seed faith that I still had lingering within me, I knew where to go and I knew who to go to. Because the one thing about it, y'all, y'all know this to be true. And you've heard many people say this. You, you can talk to somebody and all they're going to do is call somebody and tell somebody what you talked about. But you can go and talk to Jesus and you're going to talk to Jesus and that's going to be between you and the Lord. And then not only when you have that little talk with Jesus and you tell him all about your troubles and he hear that fainted cry and he answer by and by. That's where Randy got to be, y'all. That's why he can share 10 years ago, this is where I was. Not happy, getting ready to celebrate my 50th birthday. Didn't want to talk to anybody because I was ashamed of my life. But here I am now. And if you will, my life has been restored. And that's the beautiful thing is that you don't have to stay where you are. Anybody else want to say anything on the presentation before we go down to the proclamation? All right, the proclamation. In the Garden of Eden, God came down and physically fellowshiped with Adam and Eve. They walked with him and conversed with him on a regular basis. But sin destroyed this fellowship. Now, in verse 3, after presenting the New Jerusalem, God joyfully proclaimed his intention to dwell with his people in the new city. I'm going to stop right there for a minute, and I'm going to read verse 3 to you. And I'm going to read the New Living tra uh, Translation version. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Ain't that a beautiful thing to be in the presence of God, y'all? Amen, amen. So after presenting the new Jerusalem, God joyfully proclaims his intention to dwell with his people in the new city. In scripture, the idea of God dwelling with his people and being their God is covenant language. Now, we all know what a covenant is. You can look at it, a covenant, commitment, contract, agreement, exactly, promise. And the one thing about it, when you get into that, that contract, if you will, that promise, that covenant, you, you are agreeing to, if you will, abide by what you just said, I will do. And you think about how fitting that is when he talks about giving you the, the description and the vision of the bride. Because when he's giving you that description of the bride, that bride, when they stand there, that bride stand down there, there are two words that that bride gonna say, I do. So here you are, are you willing to abide by my proclamation that I have presented before you and the people of God should say, I do. Because of the fact though, in doing so, you, you are able to be a part, if you will, of the new home. Anybody want to say anything before I go a little bit further under the proclamation, y'all? Yeah. God had created Adam and made Eve, you know, how they would fellowship. Mm -hmm. The Bible don't mm -hmm. tell you how long that Adam and Eve had been in the garden. Mm -hmm. But it do tell you that the God would come down and fellowship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They knew God and God knew them. Yes. But you know, after 
fellowship is with God, Satan. You know, Satan is a terrible fellow, you know. Yes, he is. And he will try anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now, while he was visiting with Adam and Eve, do you know they were naked then? Mm -hmm. They were naked when God used to come down and have fellowship with them. They was naked mm -hmm. because they were true. And it was just like when they talk about the old, old this old earth going to pass away mm -hmm. and a new heaven coming down. See, when God created them, it was like heaven on earth. Uh -huh. Everything was going the way God wanted mm -hmm. mm -hmm. until Satan. Now, don't get me wrong mm -hmm. and think that stuff slipped up on God. God knew what mm -hmm. was going to happen mm -hmm. from the beginning. But they didn't know. And they listened to somebody telling them, if you do this, you'll be just as wise as mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. talking what came to mind when you talk about satan y'all scamming was going on way back then satan was a scammer mm -hmm. he was a scammer so you know one thing about it you know in his word it says there's nothing new under the sun scamming been around since the beginning and satan was the, was the ultimate scammer right there amen perfect peace and joy result from god's eternal presence with his people in god's perfect presence there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, and no more suffering for all eternity. Both uh, Verse 4 echoes Revelation 7, 17. Both uh, verses promises that God himself will tenderly care for his people as a bridegroom cares for his bride. Now, he will dry our tears and comfort us with the fact that the old has passed away. All is new. Never again will we experience the trials and tribulations of the old world. Now, y'all think about that. Now, he didn't say that there wasn't going to be some times that we have to go through some rough, some rough moments. No, we, we have to go through those. But even in the midst of our going through the rough seas, if you the rough seas of life, if you will, y'all, the one thing that you can you can count on, especially if you are rooted and grounded in Jesus is that even though you may cry those tears, he'll wipe away the tears from your eyes. And he will give, let you know that brighter days are ahead. He didn't say that we won't cry sometimes. He didn't say that we won't have some troubles along the way. What that song say, trouble in my way, I have to. He said we would. Exactly. We, we going to cry. And, and we're going to have those moments because the one thing that you got to recognize, there are, par there are pairs that exist. You can't have day without night, up without down, good without bad. They hand in hand. Happy without sad. They hand in hand. So we're going to go through some things, but the thanks be to God, y'all, that when we go through those not-so-pleasant things, guess what? You don't have to stay there. 
That's the beautiful thing about it. You don't have to stay there. And when you come out of it, you come out with a testimony to share with someone that is getting ready to go through what you just came out of. And you can let them know you may be going through this, but guess what? You will come out of it. I went through what you, you've you gone through. I've been where you are. And I want you to know brighter days are ahead. The sun will shine again. It won't always be stormy. But you've got to know that you've got to put your trust in the one that's going to take care of you. And that is the one and true living God. Go to him humbly in prayer and tell him all about your sorrows. Tell him everything that's holding you down. And the one thing about it, y'all, when you tell him, and you know, when they tell you, bring your problems to the altar and leave them there. He said he'll bear your burdens. And the thing about it is he will do that, but you have to let him do it. He's not going to beg you to let him take care of you. He says he stands at the door and knock. He's not going to bust your door down to try to go, come in and fellowship with you. He is waiting on the invitation for you to open the door up and receive him into your heart. It's just that simple. And when you do, things change for you. Randy, that was what he did. He opened up his heart and allowed Jesus to come in. He said, if you are there, and by him saying, if you are there, he was, he was opening up his door to let him in. Anybody want to say anything before I go a little bit further on this one? After Jesus was baptized, how he was carried mm -hmm. up into the mountain to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. And you know, if Satan would come and try to tempt Jesus, come on, Daddy. What you think he'd do with us? Mm -hmm. And while he was up there, you know, Satan went to telling him about all what he was given. And you know, it was a long time before I realized what he what Satan was saying and what he talking about he would give Jesus. Because everything in the world was on to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But see, God, Jesus had been put in the hands of Adam. Mm -hmm. And when Adam spoke of everything that God had put in his hands, Satan was in charge, y'all. Mm -hmm. When Satan said that he would give him this because all this was him, he was in charge. Because what Jesus now had to give Adam this mm -hmm. to be old, Satan had. Satan was in control, y'all, of everything but God. Mm. He couldn't control God. Mm -hmm. That's why when he told about, you know, what would happen if he dashed his foot against a stone mm -hmm. and how to, he would catch him mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. he was hungry up there because he kind of, you know, mm -hmm. the man mm -hmm. did not live by, by bread alone, alone mm -hmm. but by every word yes. that proceeded out the mouth of God. Yes. And according to the Bible, Satan left him. And if you read that scripture, it said he left him for a season. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Hey, coming mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. He's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Amen. 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 Amen, Daddy. Never again will we experience the trials and tribulations of the old world. Previously, whenever a follower of God saw him or was in his presence, it was a fearful thing, Exodus 20, 18 through 19, Isaiah 6 and 5. What has changed that God dwelling with his bride is now joyful? What has changed that now dwelling with his bride is now joyful? Now, when we're talking about verses 3 and 4, I heard a loud sound from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eye and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Now you think about that. All those things, he wiping away your tears. He wiping away your tears. No more death, sorrow, or crying, or pain. But now that's for those that are in Christ, that there is no more death, 
crying, sorrow, or pain. Now, if he is not Lord of Lords in your life, this this not where you fit in. Now, there is a place where you do fit in as we go further into this Sunday school lesson, but this not you right here. This is what he's talking about us. He's going to wipe away our tears. Anybody want to say anything before we go to the promises? I just want to say one more thing. And I'm going to try to keep it. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not, Dad. But you know what I was thinking about when he talked about it was a fearful thing to be in the presence of the true God. You know, when Zachariah was about going there to pray for the people, mm -hmm. you know, they had a preacher to go in there and pray for the people. But while he was praying in there, the Lord appeared to him. And you know, he thought he was going to die. Mm -hmm. He was scared. And he told him what was going to happen. You know, told him about how his wife was going to die. And he was so fearful and didn't believe it, so he told him what the sign was going to be. He was going to be able to speak now mm -hmm. until the child was born. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop right there. Uh-huh. Amen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Speak. What's your name? Y'all know I get, I get tears. Mm-hmm. When I, I get up to pray, it looks like as old as I am, as long as I've been praying, I don't have to be fearful when mm -hmm, I stand up. Mm -hmm, to pray. But mm -hmm, I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I sure do. Mm -hmm. It's a fearful thing to stand before God. Amen. I'm going to stop. Amen. Now that's wisdom talking right there. Amen. The promises. God seated on his throne directs John to write down his word. God says he is even now working on our behalf transforming us into the image of his dear son and readying us for the day when we will be completely new. Our hope for that day is certain, for God always finishes what he has begun. I want to stop right there, y'all. God always finishes what he has begun. You know, the thing that comes to mind is that if you think we all have some unfinished something that we could finish. And that's something that, you know, I have to look at me. I can't look at y'all when I'm doing these Sunday school lessons. I have to look at me. And that part just stands out for me. God always finishes what he began. Think about y'all if we took on that same mindset of finishing what we've begun. Completion would take place in a lot of areas of our life if we finish what we've begun. And that's one of those things where we're going to have to uh, do some active participation in our world to, to finish what we've begun. You know, you say finish what you started. Mm -hmm. So we, go ahead, go ahead. Come on. No, go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No matter what's going mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. just keep the faith and hold on mm -hmm. and trust in God because he will always finish mm -hmm. what he started. Mm -hmm. No matter what it looks mm -hmm. like, God always mm -hmm. finishes what he Amen. started. Amen. No matter what they say, mm -hmm. God always finishes. Yes what the, he started, yes. no matter what they do, mm -hmm. God always mm -hmm. finishes what he mm -hmm. started. You got to hold on mm -hmm. and believe mm -hmm. and trust in God for his promise. Amen. Amen. That's what we got to do, y'all. stirred up something in my memory when she said God always keeps what he started. Mm -hmm. And my mind went back to Abraham, y'all, when Abraham was staying in the house with his dad. And when God come to him and told him, had told him what to do to get out from among his kin mm -hmm. and go into a, a place that he was going. He didn't say it was, was but Abraham got up and moved out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and God, when she said that, that's why my mind went there. God always keeps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Whatever he said, he's going to finish mm-hmm. his promise. Amen. He promised Abraham if he would leave, how, what would happen? Mm-hmm. How his seed would mm-hmm. be. And after Abraham been out there a long time, y'all, and got old, ain't got no children. Mm-hmm. And then he went to think, I'm going to give you my word mm-hmm. now. This boy that they done raised up in the house, but maybe that'll be his seed. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't who it was. God told him he was going to come out of his line mm-hmm. and be a blessing. Mm-hmm. But you know, people, they got out of early. Oh, yeah. Sarah done got old. Abraham done got old. Mm-hmm. And they ain't got no children. Mm-hmm. And so she called herself going to help Abraham and God alone. Mm-hmm. Giving somebody mm-hmm. there a younger woman. Mm-hmm. But you see, God keeps his promise. Amen. And you know the bad thing about that, a lot of people think when Sarah offered Abraham her handmaid mm-hmm. right there, a lot of people think Abraham went right on in there and started trying to get a child. Mm-hmm. But do y'all know she started that 12 years, but 12 years after she tried to get him to go into his handmaid mm-hmm. before he would go to her. Mm. But yet it's still God's plan is still working. Mm-hmm. And that's why the word come a lot of time they say that something you can't hear like that. Amen. You just I'm gotta wait. Stop. You just gotta wait. Because she believed that because she was old mm-hmm. that God couldn't do mm-hmm. what he said he was gonna mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. So she gonna fix mm-hmm. Abraham up with somebody young. To make and, him a child. And you know what the thing about it is, I say it all the time, y'all. The Lord don't need no assistance. He don't need no assistance. The only thing you do when you try to, if you will, y'all, help out God is mess stuff up. He He knows the beginning from the end. He He knows. Let's just put it right there. He knows. And his timing is always on time. In the same sense that Jesus spoke the word, it is finished. God announces that he, his plan is accomplished. All has proceeded according to his will and for his glory. God promised abundant life giving water to all who are thirsty. For Middle Eastern people living in the desert, water was often a scarce and valuable commodity. This promise of plenteous water therefore symbolizes life and prosperity. Those who overcome will fight the good fight of faith, will enter the holy city and be richly rewarded as God's heirs, entitled to all of the benefits of a son or daughter. Those who reject God, here it come, y'all. Those who reject God, however, will experience a second death. The first death is physical on the earth. The second death, is an eternal dying, a perpetual burning in the lake of fire. Instead of dwelling with God, these people will be eternally separated from him. Now, the one thing about that, and that's that verse 8, y'all, where it says, but coward, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worship, and all liars, Their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Now, if now when y'all look at that and you see stuff that's going on, you say, "Uh uh-oh, some people already putting their fate in the wrong place because of the fact that you're going to have two deaths. That physical death, and then that eternal dying. You know, the one thing about it, y'all, the sad thing is that it don't have to be that way. That's the sad thing. It don't have to be that way. You don't have to be all these things that he just uh, uh, shared with us. You don't have to be coward, unbelievers, corrupt, murderers, immoral, practicing witchcraft, idol worship, liars. You don't have to be those things. You can turn you can turn from those evil ways and not have to have a second death. But the one thing about it, y'all, it's your choice. They say choose ye this day 
who you will serve. And in your choice, you are also determining your eternity. So where is it that you want to spend eternity? Because the Sunday school lesson says we're talking about a new home. So when we're talking about a new home, we're talking about our new home over in glory. And your new home, if you don't do what you're supposed to do for eternity, you're going to be in a miserable place while we are in eternity in our new home. The question says, in what ways can the water of life be read figuratively or literally? In what ways is the lake of fire, fire figuratively or literally? Now, what y'all think about that question? What y'all think about that question? But one thing about it, y'all, when you think about it, water of life, lake of fire. When you think about both of those, he's giving you, he, he keeps painting pictures, y'all. And in him painting a picture, he's trying to get you, if you will, to get the picture, to see what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm breaking this down so much so that when you choose, you'll make the right decision. Do you want to be a part of the water of life or the lake of fire? When y'all look at what's going on in the world today, you know, you've got, in his word he talks about, you're having all these fires and you're having the weather that is not normal in areas of the world. They're having all these different types of anomalies, if you will, of weather that you normally, they don't have that in that part of the world, but they having it. When they talk, you know, y'all, y'all think about how we grew up with uh, it being said that because of us being in the valley, tornadoes would never come. We won't ever have to worry about a tornado because we were surrounded by mountains. We know that not to be true. So therefore, we already know that uh, we are seeing it right now. We have been seeing it, and it's still, it's his word. And so therefore, when you ask the question, in what ways can the water of life be read figuratively or literally? And in what ways can the lake of fire um, figuratively or literally? Think about it. Life and death is right there. Anybody want to say anything on the promises? Before we bring this lesson on to an end, this is a good lesson right here, y'all. It makes you think, what home do you want to spend eternity in? Because you got the choice, and the choice is yours. Liberating lesson. What would it be like to be able to begin anew? People today are always longing for a fresh start, a new diet, a new job, a new house, a new school, a new marriage, et cetera. Some will take drastic measures to try to change their lives for the better. As Christians, we know that God offers the ultimate new beginning, which is salvation through Jesus Christ. When we are a new creation in Christ, we have the power to stop believing Satan's lies about ourselves and others. We have the power to think of others before ourselves, and we have the power to truly commune with God. We also understand that the joy and peace we experience briefly in this world is just a taste of what we will experience in God's presence forever. Application for activation. Remember that God's promise are, are sure. You can count on him to keep every promise as you live your life of faithfulness before God you can be assured that he will complete what he started in you. I want to stop right there for a minute. Where he says he will keep every promise. Y'all know y'all got people that will tell you, I promise. And then what they say? Swear for God, I promise. Knowing that when they make that statement, they're not going to do what they said they were going to do. But we can rest assured that 
he will keep every promise. Others need to know this assurance as well. But people need to know that they are sinners before they can recognize their thirst for what it is, a need for a relationship with God. So this week, pray for your unsaved loved ones and acquaintances. Pray that God will reveal to them their need for salvation. Pray that God will give you opportunities and wisdom to share the good news of a true new beginning. As we close, I want to leave you with this. Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future.